here is Stacy Burt here. And I tried to do this video and I just had to just erase it and start over because it was just all over the place. I'm just watching The Real, uh, Lonnie Love talk about, because um, I love the show The Real, I watch it after work, talk about like uh, her life story and how you could do anything you want, which is true. Anything in life, you could do what you want. Now I could go on with my life and like tell you a lot. Uh, but I don't I, I don't want to have this video to go on too far. But I was raised with my grandparents uh, um, in Pomona. And then when I turned 18, I got a mobile home. And I wanted, because I wanted a mobile home, because it had its own yard. It was cheaper rent. You get your own house. You own it. And my, my thing, my thinking was I was going to fix it up and when I sell it, I use a down payment on a house. That was my thought, you know, of course, mobile homes, you know, when you buy them, they need a lot of upkeep and work. And I tried to do it, but anyway, when it came down to it, no, basically I just sold it at cost. Like I made nothing, you don't, in fact, I, was at a loss, but I sold my ex boyfriend <laughs> uh, for like three grand. <laughs> but I, I was living there for a long time and I loved it. Don't get me wrong, I had my own yard, it was great. Although there were some problems with the, the property manager was a little bit uh, racist and, and, and stuff. And he you know, was not the coolest guy ever, he was pretty much a white supremacist dude. And, if you know me and my friends and my nationalities, many of them, he didn't really like me that much. But um, anyway, I lived there for the longest time and I didn't think anything of it. And then I would watch like Baywatch and all these shows with the beach and I'm like, God, I want to live at the beach. I want to live at the beach. And, and granted, I got a taste of the beach because my mom, who used to live in Hollywood, she moved to the beach. And so when I would visit my mom in the summertime, I was a beach baby. Like I had, I had both worlds. I had, I live in Inland Empire and then living at the beach. So, and then I would just go to my house and stuff like that. But, um, anyway, you get caught up in where you live thinking that's just where you live. You can't live anywhere else. Like, oh, I wish I, I caught myself thinking, God, I wish I could live at the beach. God, I wish I could live at the beach. And then one day it just dawned on me after living in this mobile home for years and I mean years oh my god I can live at the beach wait a minute I can I could sell this place or give it away and I could just pack up and move to the beach so what hurried that that thought came out came and went and then I was on, um, was it The Love Connection? I did the TV show The Love Connection twice. Yes, twice. <laughs> yeah, don't Google Stacy Burt because they, I think back then they didn't really use names. They just called me Cat because my nickname is Cat. So I did Love Connection twice. One with Chuck Woolery and one with uh, the other Woolery stuff. But anyway, I was on Love Connection. And the guy that they set me up with was living at the beach. And then after the date, I took a drive around. I'm like, you know what? Let me look around. And sure enough, that day, after my date on Loveline, I um, or Love Connection, sorry, not Loveline, Love Connection, I, I found a place. And I'm like, oh my god. And I kept call. I called, and I didn't get an answer. Called, called, called. So I just stayed. I basically stocked out, out this place. And finally the landlord called me back and he goes, well, we got someone. Da, da, da. And I go, look, I will pay three months ahead. I will pay whatever you want. I will give you three months rent right now, right now, plus your security, whatever you want. Finally, he's like, you know what? Yeah, okay, I'll take it. Because I was basically going to write him the check at that moment. I did. I got the place, I moved to the beach. Oh my God, best, best decision of my life. And it just taught taught me like, what am I thinking? What do you mean? I, I wish, oh, I wish I did, I wish, 
you can just do it. A lot of my life, I just did it, and I did it. Whatever I chose to do, I did it. I did it. And it was awesome. I have an amazing life. I went to Paris. I went to London. I lived at the Playboy Mansion. I've been on TV. I've been on TV shows. I made tons of money. I lost tons of money. I I met famous people. I hung out with famous people. I got lit on fire at trauma. I went to bed with Tom Cruise. Yes, I did. True story. For a movie. Not really, like, intimate, but for a role. I did it for my craft. I did it for the work. But anyway... I did everything. Now, you look, well, what are you doing now? I'm like, I'm doing what I'm doing. Because it's my choosing. Because I'm thinking, like, if I really wanted more in my life, I would do it. And, you know, I complain sometimes I'm being stifled. Like, you know, I got a normal 9 to 5 job. Like, I had it all, but I left it. I just wanted a 9 to 5 job. I wanted to get married. I just want to live at the beach. I don't care how big or small the place is. I just kind of condensed. I started after living large. I started cutting back and just realizing what's important, which I think is just a process. I'm all for living large. Go as big as you want. But don't feel bad if that's not what you want. You see, like, everyone says, oh, do what you want. Think big. Do this. Because I see these videos of, people doing like amazing things and I'm like God I want to do those amazing things but then I think I go I have and I did I'm not saying it's over like oh I did I love my life I love my life you know I did it my way no I'm not done yet I'm still gonna do what I want to do and trust me I go through these moments where I feel stifled where I will tell you like there's something more in this world there's more stuff in this world that I need to do I don't know what I'm kind of frustrated because I'm spinning my wheels. I feel like I'm spinning my wheels right now in mud. Like I feel like a, a car stuck in mud right now. But that's only because I just can't figure it out. There's something I need to more to do. But the focus of this video is don't get like intimidated or feel bad about yourself when you see all these people doing all these amazing things and you want to do them and you don't. Sometimes it's simple things. It's fine. It's amazing. Because some not everyone could do all these amazing things. There's got to be a base. There has to be people that just do normal, what you or I might call mundane things. Mundane things. Like just normal, tedious, mundane things. And, and that's okay. Because it's basically the grease in the wheel that just keeps it going. You don't have to be the wheel. You could be the grease in the wheel. So I'm telling you this as I'm trying to give myself a pep talk. It's okay just to come home and sit on the couch and pet your puppy, pet your cat, feed your husband dinner. Just do your normal things because you're the grease in the wheel. You keep it going. And if that's all that you do, that's amazing. That's awesome. You breath in your lungs. You're doing something you're as long as you're doing something something productive you're making someone happy just as long as one person you're doing something for one person or not really a person it'd be a soul because it can be a cat a bird i don't care one soul one soul even a plant so maybe not a soul one thing if you're making one thing thrive and live and be a better thing than they were before you. You're contributing to the world. That is awesome. That is awesome. And it's good for your own psyche. Because I had, you know, like, not only me, but I had a boyfriend one time that was just like down on himself. And he could, so, so he had tools in pawn shop. So I got his tools out of the pawn shop. Like, Sometimes they just need to be dug out because I would tell him because he wouldn't work. He was working. Anyway, it's a long story with this guy. <laughs> um, you know that old story. What's a musician without a girlfriend? Homeless. But anyway, um, I don't know if you know that joke. Uh, but I was telling him because he'd be like lazy. And I go, look, 
even if you get a job at McDonald's, because he was like, oh, I need a job, but I don't want to work at McDonald's. I want to work at this. I go, I don't care what you get a job at. I don't care. Just having a job, any kind of job, even if it's volunteer work, anything, gives purpose to your life, and you feel like you're contributing to the world. Just contribute something to the world. Even if you're homeless. Like, I know a lot of homeless people, yeah, they don't have a job. But you know what? They, 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 they. There's this one guy I talked to, and I, I had some shoes to donate, and I go, where should I donate? And he told me, like, certain places, and he talks, and, you know, he contributes. He, t he tells me, oh, this is a good place to, this this is a good place for the homeless that you want to uh, d donate here. I'm like, oh, thank you for your information. He helped me just contribute to the world. So it could be very little. You don't need to, like, conquer the world and do this. And, like, because I see these TV shows and stuff, like, you could do this, you could do that, anything you put your mind to, you could, and that's great, that's awesome, that's awesome, and that's true. You can do anything you want, you really can. And even if it's, even if what you want is just feeding your husband at five o'clock, or petting your cat, or even if that is the biggest thing of your life, the biggest thing of the day, that's okay. That's okay. And like I said, it's not just a pep talk for you, it's also a pep talk for me because for the past few years, I've been feeling very stifled, very stifled. Because, you know, my husband's very set in his ways. He's just, he works, he works hard, he goes to the gym, he does what he wants to do, he goes to concerts. But when he gets home, he just goes to the man cave. And then, because, and it's my problem. I should just like, okay, if he doesn't want to do that, I need to go out and do what I want to do on my own, but I don't, because I, I, I look at the kayaks, I see the people on, I, on the kayaks, and I'm like, oh, I want to do that, but I don't want to do that alone, I want to do it with my husband, but he doesn't want to do it, so I'll just stay home and pout, and be a bitch, because I'm stifled, and I'm bitter, and I have been doing that, so, you know, I think I might, I might just have to buy a waterproof camera, because that way I can share it with you guys when I go out on the beach and when I go on the kayak. Because there's something in me that I just I just can't just do it without sharing it with somebody. Hold on, there's some loud people outside. Yeah, there's just something about me that I don't know. I, I wish I wasn't like that. And yeah, I do enjoy it. I go on my rap. I'm by myself and I'm loving it. It's beautiful. But I see the beautiful, the beauty in the world. I'm out there by myself. Whenever I do stuff by myself, I see all this beauty. But there's something in me that I'm like, it's wasted. It's just on me. I want to share it. And that's probably why I do the YouTube thing. But I wish I had a camera that, could, that was waterproof that I could go take out there on the boat with me and stuff like that. And you know what? I'm going to really try this year. I'm going to take you guys. You're going to be my guys, okay? You know, I'm going to try to do out stuff on my own because... There's, the people here, you know, beach people, they're very just set in their ways. They do their things. I'm a little different. There's things I want to do that not everyone wants to do. And that's what's kept me stifled for a few years. And I'm a little bitter, and I get a little cranky, and I'm very bitchy because of it. Which is my thing. i got to stop doing that. Because I really want to do more this year. I want to do more stuff. But I also want to accept the days when things don't work out and I don't get to go anywhere and I have to stay home, homebound yet again, cabin fever. But I'm trying to like take a deep breath and enjoy it no matter where I'm at. Because at least when I'm home, I get to be with my babies and I'm making them happy. I'm making these beautiful souls happy. My little bird. Just being bear, my 18-year-old cat, Frankie, the one that lives in the live in the bedroom. My 18-year-old cat lives on the balcony, fenced in, so Clyde doesn't get her. Frankie, scared of Clyde. Frankie's a little delicate flower, lives in the bedroom, fenced in, so Clyde doesn't terrorize him. Uh, Felix, who's the alpha male, who's not scared of anything, and then Clyde, and of course, then my husband. Those are the only souls I really care about. That's it. 
And if my husband doesn't want to go on certain things, because I'm one of those people, I, I love to look at sunsets. I love to look at the moon. I wish my camera could capture the moon, because the moon on the water is so cool. So gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's, it's gorgeous. You know, how it dances on the water. And I wish my camera could capture it, because you know what? My favorite thing to do is go on the beach with a glass of wine and look at a full moon dance on the ocean. Roy, my husband's not into that. And I, I, I let him have it for it, and I gotta stop because, you know, he likes watching superhero movies. He likes going to movies. I don't like going to movies too much. If I watch movies, I like to watch at home because I don't, I, if I don't like, I don't know. I just, I'm just not. I haven't liked them. I used to like the movies back in the day, but not anymore. Not anymore. I haven't been in, enthusiastic on movies. My new thing, YouTube. YouTube 100% TV, even though I spend $250 a month <laughs> on our cable bill on internet, I, I spend because my thing, I pay all the bills in the house, all the bills in the house, and Roy pays the rent. And I pay the car and every single bill, anything that has a stamp gets sent here, I pay. So, yeah, I pay $250 for the cable. And, uh, and there's nothing on TV. There's just nothing. But it's okay. I'm kind of glad. Although I do kind of miss those nights where me and Roy would kind of sit and watch TV and eat popcorn and talk. Those those were good. Those were good times. Maybe one of these days will happen because he just watched the same old movies over and over. And after a few times, I can't. The only thing I can watch over and over is Sex and the City and I Love Lucy. Those are the only things I can watch over and over. Uh, and maybe like Better Off Dead, the movie Better Off Dead. Any John Cusack movies are always, 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 also good. But we just have different tastes. And he watched Dateline a lot. He watches Dateline a lot. It scares me. I'm a scared. I'm scared to drink Gatorade because is there antifreeze in it? Is he trying to learn something? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where this video really went. This is basically a pep talk. Like, look. Don't get it down if you're not conquering the world every day. Conquer a little bit. Just wake up in the morning and just do something, whether it's for yourself or for someone else. For someone else would be nice. But doing something for someone else is also doing something for you, you as well. It's good for the psyche. Like I was telling my ex-boyfriend when he wouldn't get a job, I go, getting a job is not just about money. It's just you feel like you contribute to the world. It's just... It just cleanses your soul and you just feel productive and you feel better. And then once you get productive, you can, you do more things. Like the body that stays in motion stays in motion. The body that stays at rest stays at rest. So you want to get the wheels turning. You want to get the wheels turning where you're going something, doing something. But don't let it get you down if you're not like winning Emmys or, you know, Climbing Mount Everest, you don't have to. It's okay just to, if all you do is wake up, smile, say hello to somebody, and then go back to bed. <laughs> That's a good job. Because he did something. He said hello to someone. He did some kind of interaction. Just something. Just do something. So, so I guess it's kind of like a pep talk, but like a, I don't know. Like it's on the down low. It's on the down low. Pep talk. In other words, you're good. You're good. As long as your intentions are good. Now, if you're evil, then fuck you. <laughs> if you're evil, fuck you. Don't like you. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope everyone's having a groovy day. Clyde is.